In this video, we're going to look at some Lewis diagrams, what they represent, and how they can help us figure out what stable ions are going to appear for each element. So we have to have some prior knowledge here, and that's that uh, the if we want to know the number of valence electrons for an element, we need to know what group it's in. For instance, group 2 have 2, group 7 have 7, etc. So what Lewis diagrams are going to show us is they're going to show us um, how many valence electrons an atom actually has. And uh, just to make a point here that uh, the number of valence electrons and the number of regular electrons are not necessarily the same thing because valence electrons are found in the outermost shell and regular electrons are found in every shell. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So for starters, we've got a group one element. And of course, if it's group one, that means it's going to have one valence electron. So we'll use one dot here. Um, group two elements, they have two dots. Group three elements have three valence electrons or three dots. And group four elements will have four. Now, when we get to group five, we're going to form what we call a lone pair. And what a lone pair of electrons was going to be right there. And this is very stable. In fact, this is what all atoms want to have. They want to have a bunch of lone pairs. You can see that this is our very first one, though. So when we get to something in group six, we actually have two lone pairs right there and right there. And group seven have three lone pairs. And then group eight actually have a full four lone pairs. And so this is considered very stable here. Now, we also have another rule here to talk about. It's called the octet rule. It says atoms are only happy or stable when they have either zero or eight valence electrons. So out of all the examples we just looked at, this is the only one that is happy or stable because it's got a full outer shell. It's got eight in it. And each and every one of these other atoms here is going to have to do something to become happy or stable. So let's take a look at what metals want to do. So lithium in group one, it's got a choice here. To become happy, it's either going to get rid of one or it's going to gain seven. And we're always going to go with kind of the lowest number here. So it's going to want to get rid of one. And so there's that one electron. That one dot right here is that one electron. So what we're left with now is a lithium um, atom or ion, I guess in this case, that has a charge of plus one. If electrons have or, or minus one, and we get rid of one, that must mean we have one more proton, we have a charge of plus one. So something that's in group two, what it's going to want to do is it's going to want to get rid of both of those electrons. And if it's lost two negatives, that means it's going to have an overall charge of plus two. And something like aluminum in group three is only going to be stable once it gets rid of three electrons. And so it's going to have a charge of plus three. So we've made a discovery here. Metals lose electrons to become stable positively charged ions. And the catchy name for that are they're called cations. The way to remember it is this T here kind of looks like a big plus sign plus for positive ions. Let's take a look at the nonmetals, sort of the opposites here. So we've got chlorine. We'll start in group seven. It's got seven valence electrons. And uh, this is a little different. It actually wants to gain one to become stable. It's sort of the shorter path to, to eight. So we're going to put the one electron right there on the left side of our equation. And if we are adding in a valence electron. We have an extra negative. We have a charge of negative one. So that's our ion, negative one. Sulfur with six will want to gain two. And I'll have a charge of minus two. And phosphorus with five will want to gain three. And I'll have a charge of minus three. So again, we can draw a conclusion here. This time, nonmetals gain electrons to become stable, negatively charged ions or anions. Now, this method for figuring out the stable charge of ions is uh, it can be a little bit long, long, and there's faster ways to do it. So uh, let's look at group two here. You'll notice that all we need to do is just look up the charge on the periodic table. I'm sure whatever periodic table you have has a bunch of charges on it. We've got a bunch of positives over on the right side here. We've got a bunch of negatives. You might be wondering why these ones in the middle here have more than one positive charge. Well, they don't, they don't have valence electrons. They don't bond the same as the uh, elements in group one to seven. And so uh, it's a different kind of chemistry going on. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe.